What would it profit you or me if we spent all of our life in our career, I mean, we just worked hard and, 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 and month by month, year by year, we just climbed the, the rungs of success. And I mean, we just really went at it. And I mean, we worked hard. What would it profit you or me to spend our entire life climbing the ladder of success only to get to the top and discover that it's leaning against the wrong building? And yet I see it all the time. I see people who literally spend their entire life and career doing something that they weren't born to do. What's your passion? What's your strength? You see, once you discover your passion, you'll never work another day of your life. Because the moment you discover your passion and you love what you're doing, it's just something that you love to do and it doesn't seem like work to you. And people that are successful, they, they know their purpose in life. They, they know why they are there. Now, I would encourage you, and especially some of you, because so many of you are young, you do have to understand at my age, everybody looks young now, okay? So I, I used to think it was amazing. Now it's just like, every, John, they're all young. They're all young now. But I would encourage you at your age to really help to, for you to pursue this area of what is my passion, what was I born for, what is my calling, what is my strength zone, and whatever it is, I would encourage you to get right there and stay right in your strength zone. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a statement. Again, I'm not in your notes yet, but just kind of keep taking notes and relax, okay? I'll, I'll go fill in the blanks a little bit later, okay? But I want to stay on this for a few moments this morning. What I have discovered is, and I'm going to say something that's going to perhaps seem a little bit um, odd to you, but just stay with me and let me, let me talk you through this process for a while. You see, I encourage people to discover their strengths and then stay with their strengths. And I'm going to say something to you that is kind of culturally opposite of what you're used to hearing. I'm going to say to you this morning, in the area of your skills, don't work on your weaknesses. You say, oh my goodness, what do you mean? Don't work on my weaknesses. The reason I'm telling you not to work on your weaknesses is because you're weak in your weaknesses. Okay? Now, that's, in the, in the States, that's totally opposite of everything we've been trained. Because in, in our education system in the States, if you get an A in math, and you get a C in language, then they tell you to work on your language. Is that the way they do it here in Singapore? Huh? They say, well, well work, on, work on your language. And, and I'm saying, if you got an A in math and a C in language, don't work on your language. Just get on your knees and thank God you got a C. You, you probably deserved a D or an F. Now, why do you get an A in one subject and a C in another subject? Because some subjects kind of fit your leanings and other subjects don't. Isn't that true? Now, why I'm saying for you to work, work on your strengths, don't work on your weaknesses in the area of skills, watch this. From a one to a 10, if I'm a two, which is not very good. If I'm a two, and I really work hard and say, oh my goodness, I don't want to be a two. If I really work hard, I, I don't know, maybe I can get to a three. May, maybe after years, I could get up to a four. But, but you see, four is below average. And people don't pay for average. In other words, if I work on my weaknesses, I'll never excel, I'll never distinguish myself, and nobody will ever want what I have. Let me turn that around. Let's say I'm above average, I'm a seven in an area. And, and I say, oh, good night, I, I'd like to work on my strength here. And I go from a seven to an eight to a nine. Now, now I get up there in that nine category, people stand in line for nines. You see, you gotta work on your strength. If I work, for example, I love to sing. I, I just love to sing. That's the good news. You already know what the bad news is, don't you? I, I'm not any good. 
Now, I love to do it, but I'm not a good. So let's say I said to myself, well, my goodness, I'm going to get good at this. So I'm going to get a voice teacher, and I'm going to take music appreciation, and I take lessons for two or three years. Can I tell you, after I've taken voice lessons and practiced hard for two or three years, I, instead of being a, a, a one, I might be a 2.5. In other words, you still don't want to hear me sing, and you certainly aren't going to pay for it. You may pay me not to sing. <laughs> now, when I talk to people about not working on their weaknesses, again, it's a culture paradigm shift because we think, well, I've always got to work on my weaknesses. I've got to work on my weaknesses. I'm saying, no, no, in the area of skills, don't work on your weaknesses because, as I've said, you're weak in your weaknesses. People don't pay for average. You don't. I don't. You don't run down to the store and say, boy, if I could just get an average telephone, man, this would be super. You don't go in a TV store and say, do you have an average TV? No, 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 no. You don't go to the restaurant and say, oh, I can hardly wait to go to an average restaurant and get some average food. No, you don't do that. And when you go to the average rate, uh, uh, restaurant and, and, the, and the hostess starts to take you to your seat, you don't say, excuse me, I don't want a great seat. Could I have an average seat? I, I, I don't want one like by the window or, you know, overlooking the water. I'd just like to have, do you have a seat that nobody else wants? <laughs> and before the, before the host leaves you, you, you don't say, excuse me, just one more thing. Do you have here an average waiter? I don't want a real good one. Oh, no, no, no. I'd like to have one that comes slow, doesn't fill the glasses. I, I would like to have one that messes up the order, brings the wrong food. And when the average waiter comes to the average table at the average restaurant, you don't look at that person and say, oh, by the way, I don't want to know what's special here. What's average? Do, do you have any food that no one else has ordered today? And when you finish it with that experience at that average restaurant, at that average table, with an average waiter, an average food, you don't walk out of that restaurant and look at your friend and say, wow, I'm pumped. No, no, no. People don't pay for average. So let me ask you a question. Why do you love it so much? Why do you settle for it? You see, one of the secrets of success is for you or me to find out what we're good at and to have a passion to do it and stay in our strength zone and don't worry about your weaknesses. Your weaknesses are weak and they always will be. Now, I'm talking about your skills. I'm not talking about other weaknesses. I'm not talking about, for example, if, you have a, if you're weak in attitude. I mean, if you have a bad attitude. <laughs> Are you with me on this one, huh? I'm not saying, oh, if you've got a bad attitude, don't worry about it. Just because you're disgusting and nobody likes you, it's okay. No, 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 no. I'm talking about skills. I'm not talking about attitude. I'm not talking about discipline. I'm not talking about things that will make or break you in life. I'm talking about your skill set. Don't, don't try to work on your weaknesses. It's, it's just that simple. I was doing this, I was doing this lecture recently, and, and I had a person kind of raise their hand and kind of take me to task on it. They, because they were, they didn't like this, don't work on your weaknesses. And they said, well, now wait a minute, John, how about Tiger Woods? Tiger Woods is a golfer, and, and, and if he maybe plays a bad round, what does he do? He goes over to the driving range, and he, and he maybe for the next hour or two hours, he works on his swing. And he said, there's a perfect example of Tiger Woods. He's working on his weakness. I said, no, no, no. Tiger Woods is working on his strength. He's a great golfer, unless you don't notice that. He, he's one of the greatest golfers in the world and, and and when he goes and works on his swing you understand he's got already got a great swing he's in his strength zone he's just trying to take one of his little niches and weak areas in his strength zone he's staying right in his strength zone he's working on golf because he's a great golfer just like I would work on communication because I'm a communicator he's he's not working on his weak he's not working on his weak he's working on his strengths let me explain it this way when Tiger Woods goes to the driving range and practices it helps him because it's his strength. When I go to the practice range and I practice, 
it doesn't help me. <laughs> Practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes permanent. And if I practice in something I'm not good at, I don't get any better. I just get permanently bad. And so when you work on your weaknesses, when you work on your, when you work on your weaknesses, you're just going from very bad at best to bad. Hello? And people say, oh, I'm, I'm so glad they've been working on it. They're, they're bad, but... I'm really glad they're working on it. It's just, they're never going to get good. Successful people, they know their purpose in life. They have a passion for it, and they stay in their strengths. 